this car. I don't know. So we spoke too soon. Uh, when we last left off, we had replaced the um, neutral control switch, so it was, on the transmission, and it fired right up. So um, my, this is my son's car, and he took it to work, and it worked fine, and then he went to come home, and it wouldn't start. And it simply just spins. The starter just spins. It doesn't engage. I don't know if the, the battery was dead last, the battery's out, so I can't show you. But um, I think it's the solenoid in the starter. The weird thing is this starter is only like two months old. Um, there was a different issue going on with it. We thought it was the starter. We replaced the starter. That did not fix the issue. We did eventually fix it later. So it has a new starter, and that's odd. We're going to get the starter out, which is a pain in the butt in these cars. And we're going to get it tested and see. Maybe it's just a... Could be an electrical problem of some sort. There have been a few of those. Uh, it's helpful to get the air box and an intake out. So it's laying over here on the floor. And these just these come out pretty easy. This just has the clamps, like hose clamps, and it pops off. This just clips off. It's just got push pins on the bottom that push them up here and the little rubber grommets. So it just everything just kind of like pulls out. And then you get a little more space. Um, but now that I have it out, I'm gonna try to show you where these bolts are. They're still, they're still not very easy to see, but so you're coming in here into this, these, all this hoses here. One bolt is that bolt right down there behind that wire loom. And the other one is where this wire loom here, that wire loom connects in. So it's kind of behind that. Kind of contort your hand in here. You're gonna come at it kind of from the side. Yes, I got it. It's it's like watched one video where the guy said it's a pain. It'll be the hardest thing you ever had to do. Uh, he wasn't kidding, but they will come up. Um, and uh, and then once you get the top ones out, then you go underneath to get the third one up. And uh, yeah, we'll go get it tested, and we'll um, we'll see how it goes. I suspect it's. I mean, it just everything points to it being bad. It just doesn't make it. Like if they, if I hadn't just replaced it, I would say. Yep, it's clearly the starter. But the fact the starter is less than 60 days old, um, you know, it's an, it would be odd. Um, it was a, you know, I'm not, I don't want to bash anybody, it was a Rock Auto, El Cheapo, whatever, Chinese knockoff, no name. You know, it was the cheapest one they had. Okay, so the top two are out. And, uh, that's the third one. There's only three. I'm going to loosen a little bit. You can see it's pretty loose. So, the reason I say that is a little tip. Make sure you do the top bolts first, then come underneath and do the bottom one. Because otherwise, it'll want to fall, and it will either actually fall, or it'll bind up the one of the, the last bolts at the top. And it won't want to come out very easily and you need them to come out easy because you really can't get tools and they're very good you can see it's kind of see where i was working there's the one and i was bringing hand in from down there so you're just not going to get good leverage and so if you get bound up on that bolt at an angle you just you're just going to fight it as it is you fight it so uh get those two out while it's stuck tight and then start loosening this one and then you can see kind of up here is where the wiring connects and you just can't really get to it. I mean, you can see with the camera, but by the way, these are all 13 millimeter. You gotta kind of lift up on that with your hand because it gets real tight. So you lift up on it and it just comes out nice and loose. All right, so we're out. Now we need the pull wire our way here. And then you can flip it around. Is it a teeth pad? No. It's all right. This one possibility is either the teeth 
have ground off or on the flywheel, I guess, a bad subject. I did put it in gear and roll it and uh, and then try to start it again, did the same thing. So uh, I don't think it's the flywheel unless it's just like, you know, catastrophically bad, but I doubt it. So and you move this and rotate it so that you can get to the wires. There, and then you can unbolt those. When this just spins, this spindle will just spin around. That's what that we're hearing when we turn the key is just a, just a whirring of an electric motor. What should happen is a solenoid should push that spindle out this way and butt up against these washers here and spin. And this connects into the flywheel and cranks the, cranks the motor around. Uh, what's happening, I think, is that this is not extending out as it's supposed to. But it's just weird that this isn't very old. And it's almost seven. I smell dinner cooking. So I think I'm gonna hold off for the night and go clean up and have dinner. And uh, and then we'll get this tested probably in the morning. And we'll see where we go from there. If it's bad, that's a simple fix. Well, I mean, other than, you know, but it's a clear solution, I guess I should say. Put a new starter in. I'll see if this one's still under warranty. You know how these cheapy knockoffs go. Maybe only a 30 day or something. But um, that'd be a bummer if I got to buy another starter. But if so, that's what we'll do. And then that should fix it. Back here the next day. We got this uh, starter tested this morning. And it did fail for them as well. It's covered under warranty, but the warranty is... Um, well, it's kind of a pain. You got to mail it back and then they get it and then they mail you a new one and you mail it back on your dime. Like it, it looked like it was going to be around a three week turnaround time. And frankly, we just don't have that kind of time. We got to get his car back on the road. So I just went ahead and bought a, a new starter from AutoZone. We had one here in town. Uh, a, I think this is a remanufactured. Yep. Yeah. I got the first bolt in and I realized while I was down here. And this is the second time I put the starter in. And maybe when I did a starter the last time, a couple months ago, I, I did this and just have forgotten. But this bolt up here where that negative wire connects is actually a lot easier to do from down here. I don't know why I didn't do that before. It seems so obvious in hindsight. As things often do, there it is. I'll be darn. We'll get this top one in, and then uh, the, the, the other one at the top isn't quite so bad. I think that I have this on the wrong one, but a ground's a ground, right? We'll see. Let's try it. This is why you're actually connected to a different spot. Uh, that's why. That's why I had to do it from the top. Not from down here. It connects to the one around the back side that you can only get to from the top. Yeah, so, you know, it's just this is what happens when you don't really know what you're doing, but you just sort of make it, you get it done. Sometimes you screw it up and you got to redo it. But it's all part of the experience. Whatever. Makes it take a really long time, but it's cheaper than having somebody else do it. This would be an expensive job. So... Uh, save the kids some money and uh, yeah you know it's fun we just enjoy the experience got everything back get back together from a starter perspective so now I got to put all this electrical back together get the battery back in put the air cleaner back on uh, I'm not gonna do it, all of that until I test to make sure that I've got it hooked up right um, I hate to have to undo all that and I have a tendency to miss something from time to time and then I have to tear it all apart. And um, so I just kind of want to give you a quick, I, I disconnect all this loom. Now, ideally, uh, if you're gonna do this and you've never done this before, mark all these. So I did this the first time, actually the first two times I've, I've done this with the starter. Um, the first time I took the starter out and it wasn't the starter, it was actually just a bad uh, negative battery terminal. And then um, we thought it was a starter again. So I put the starter back in or a new starter in 
and uh, it still wasn't the issue. It was the that was the um, uh, position control sensor, the um, neutral switch. So anyway, so I've done this a few times, and I kind of just now remember where they go. But ideally, you put some tape on these. You can tape them and mark them, like write a number one, and then throw some like where the connector goes. Throw some tape on it. Uh, or take pictures. So that with, with cell phones, just take a picture of every connector you, you unhooked and how they go back together. And that way you can get them, you're not guessing and you know which ones. Cause the, well, the biggest problem I run into isn't that I don't know where a connector goes. It's that I forget there's a connector to go anywhere. And you can see everything just kind of looks like, you know, a wiring plumbing accident happened in here. And everything's black and the connectors are black and the loom is black and you just... It just sort of hides, like camo camouflage is in there. So get whatever helps you remember where everything goes. And um, you can get it all back together. I see that's a mass airflow sensor. So I don't care about that so much right now. I'll get that plugged in here in a minute. Uh, I just want to make sure the starter turns over. So, um, and these are just for, so I don't forget to do them uh, later. So, yeah, just do something that helps you remember, and uh, that way you don't miss something. Uh, in this case, there aren't that many. I only unhooked that one, that one, that one, so I get the loom back. This goes to the air tube once I get the air box back in, and then these are all just the battery connectors. So, I get the battery back in here, and uh, turn it over. We'll see what happens. Okay, so battery's back in. Again, I don't have the air box in and the sensor, and it'll it'll freak out. Um, but that's okay. I can clear that code later. Uh, I just want to hit it once. Just want to see if that starter spins. All right. It turns. Good enough. <clears throat> that is all I needed to know. All right. We'll get this finished, put back together, get it back on the ground, and uh, you should be back on the road. So I cheered success after the last fix. I'm not going to cheer this time. Just thought it was maybe bad karma. So we're just going to call it good for now. Um, he's probably going to be getting rid of this car. So, you know, if you're in the market for a 2002 Focus Wagon, uh, it's, it's actually, I mean, it's a decent little car. It's just a colossal pain in the neck to work on. And honestly, I, I'm not an automotive engineer. And I'm sure there's reasons why all this stuff happens and why they have to do things a certain way. But I just don't understand. It seems backwards to me. There's the exhaust. Manifold comes out the front and then underneath the car all the way back. So that's handy, you know, when you want to work on a car. Uh, it's always a good idea to get it to like a thousand degrees. And then work underneath it and and that exhaust runs right under the motor you can't avoid the exhaust and so it's a good opportunity to melt the skin on your hands it's pretty cool so everything else though fuel intake like that's all on the back the starter there's a um, uh, idle air control valve that I had to replace that's back here underneath this intake Feel, feels like that's the most common thing you're going to work on what are the odds like you're going to take off the exhaust manifold all that often but it's a strong run of motor that's the thing like once you get these electronics figured out it actually runs pretty good it's good gas mileage um so if you're in the market for one let me know get you a good deal on it uh he's looking for less station wagon maybe something a little bigger uh he's a big kid kind of like me he comes by he's got the this the squatchy uh, tendencies to the gene so he's a big kid and uh, I say he's a kid he's 21 and uh, so he's wanting something a little bigger maybe like an SUV or a truck and so wants to get out of the little car this served its purpose um, the uh, interesting thing about this car we actually got this car super cheap on accident uh, the person we made an offer and she heard a different number and we said yes, and she said yes, but sh we said $800, and she heard $300, and so uh, she said yes to $300. And I'm like, okay. So we gave her $300. So we've done some work in this. It was it was not well taken care of. It's got new brakes in front, new tie rods in front, new starter, obviously. 
if you're interested. There's some other quirky things about it I gotta fix, so we're not gonna sell it just yet. Um, again, there's some weird stuff inside where you have, this is weird. Somewhere, somebody put in this switch for the AC. This is your AC off on. And they had this little sticker here. Make sure you turn it off when the engine is off. And the reason is because when this is on, it's hot all the time. It does not turn off with the key, so it will run your battery dead, which makes zero sense whatsoever. So we're gonna fix that. Uh, AC blows cold though, it does work. Radio works. So all the electronics in here work. Like there's the AC button. My guess is the switch in here went bad and they went to a dealership and said, what's the new switch cost? It was probably a lot of money. And they just said, I don't wanna do that. And so somebody who has some electrical knowledge and just wired it up to here. So uh, one of these days before we sell this, we'll get this apart and take a peek at the wiring and I'll, we'll do a video on that. That'll be, and that'll be interesting actually, cause it'll be my first time in there too. So we'll see what we find. Um, anyway, we're good to go now. We'll get this back together on the ground and he's back on the road. And um, thanks for watching. Hope you learned something. Hope you enjoyed. Uh, if you did, hit that like button at the bottom maybe subscribe and uh appreciate you and we'll see you next time